This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. And good morning and welcome to Houston Newsmakers and with Houston Mayor Candidate State Senator John Woodmar. Good to see you. Good morning, Cabrillo. Always good to see you. Hey, I always enjoy being on your show. Hey, another election. You've had just a couple through your career. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them in uh, the many years, 50 years in elected office between state and, and Senate. How is this campaign different? It's your hometown. I think the urgency of the matter, uh, if you're a public servant and you see things that need correcting, uh, it will motivate you to campaign, uh, put yourself through uh, unfortunate attacks, but uh, that's part of it. I don't like it, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm so serious about public service, and I see things daily that Houstonians see that we can do better. So that's, that's what my motivation is. So uh, let me get the elephant out of the room right now. Sure. Uh, the concerns that came out this past week, the leaked tape, of uh, Congresswoman Jackson Lee surfaced this past week. It's a years old audio, by the way, of her uh, talking to a staff member in what can only be called an abusive tone, plenty of expletives. Something her campaign first suggested was maybe something that uh, your campaign may have done. <laughs> but um, she wrote later on and said, who, for anybody who listened to the tape of concern, that she said, I am great regretful and hope that you will judge me, not by something trotted out by a political opponent that worked to exploit this and backed by extreme Republican supporters on the very day that polls open, but from what I've delivered to Houstonians over my years of public service. Your response to all of that? You, you have anything to do with I, that? What's, what's your I thought about I was as it? shocked as everyone else was uh, and really have no comment about it. Those are her words, not mine. Uh, that's, you know, unfortunate is all I can say. I had no interest in spreading that. Uh, those are her words, and uh, I'd rather talk about garbage pickup and broken water lines, and uh, our campaign is very positive. I've not said one word, not one word, about one of my opponents, and I think that's significant. You asked me, how does this campaign differ from others? I've never seen, it's probably unprecedented in city politics for everyone to be attacking one candidate, mm. and I think they're uh, desperate, and I respect them to do what they want, but I want to talk about what Houstonians care about. So let's talk about that for a second. November 7th uh, is the date. Of course, early voting is going on right now. It's your hope with an exclamation point. Maybe this is the, the, your political career. You want to maybe end your political career as a mayor of Houston, perhaps another... I don't look at it as ending a career. It's a continuation of public service that I started at 22 years of age as a University of Houston student, knocking doors because mm -hmm. I had passion for helping people. It's that same passion that I had as a young man for public service, but now I have years of experience and contacts that can make a difference. So what would you say to voters who are trying to decide what to do? Why are you the one who can make the difference that would make them want to vote for you? Because I've been a Houstonian my whole life, and I know when we felt safe. I knew when traffic wasn't an issue, and... Uh, our infrastructure, we, we continue to kick the can down the road with uh, flooding our streets. But if we don't fix public safety, nothing else matters. I chair criminal justice. I work on public safety each and every day. I know what it's doing to our families, not only their safety, but even the economics of Houston. The values in the Galleria are going down because people are afraid to go shop in the Galleria. Mm -hmm. We hear that uh, conventions are now considering not coming to Houston. So it's an economic issue, but first it's a public safety. And I've been robbed at gunpoint. I don't want that to happen to another Houston family. So let's say you get elected and you get into office. What is your first priority or priorities? Public as, safety. Yeah. Public safety. So how would that, how would that manifest they want? itself? Well, you're going to have to, one, admit we have a problem. The current administration says, oh, everything's fine. This year's number's better than last year's. That's not a good indicator. You have to go back prior to COVID. You have to talk to Houstonians, admit you have a problem, and go to work on it. And you need collaboration among all of our law enforcement agencies. You need someone in, as the mayor's office that can talk to Austin. We need additional Austin resources for anti-gang task force, anti-drug task force. We need to hold people accountable. When someone puts a gun in your face, you've got to hold them accountable. But if they're a nonviolent offender, you try to help them change their life. I have experience in fighting crime, and from day one, I know we can make a difference. Law enforcement's endorsed me. They want to work for John Whitmer. So we'll raise their morale, and we will tackle the crime issue, and then we will also deal with infrastructure. Will you keep uh, Troy Fenner as police yes, chief? Yes, Troy Fenner has been a good chief. I think he can do better under my administration. 
we will uh, allow him to be proactive, do some things that he's not allowed to do now. So, and it's also collaboration. It's not just HPD. We have almost 300 Metro police officers that need to be working in collaboration with HPD. U of H, TSU, the Med Center, Rice, our school districts have police departments, our constables. We've got to get everyone in a room and say, what are we going to do about this crime issue? No community should go unprotected. And then hold people accountable that put a gun in your face. You know, to, to, to say that murders are down by 10 people, that doesn't count to folks that are assaulted. And, and it's the repeat violent offenders that we've got to get off the street. We have fugitives on the streets of Houston charged with murder or capital murder. We don't even know where they are until you see them on a 10 o'clock news going in a convenience store, shooting the operator, pistol whipping the customers. That's got to come to a halt in Houston, and I know how to get it done. So you've seen the hobby poll like a lot of people have. This sure. summer shows voters, likely voters, choosing you over Congresswoman Jackson Lee in the main election. Sure. You look at the numbers, you and the, of all 18 candidates there, there's a clear expectation of a runoff. Uh, in the case of a runoff, it shows that if that happens, it'll be you and Congresswoman Jackson Lee, but it shows you with a much bigger, sure. we have another slide here, go to the next slide, thank you, sure. a much bigger lead in that category. You see that? Do you pay any attention to those polls? I don't pay attention to the polls. I run scared. The job is so important. The issues are so important. I'm going to work as hard as I can in this campaign. I'll be prepared on day one to make a difference. Those who run against you say you're a career politician, and that's not exactly what we need. So what do you say to them? Well, I mean, you the, say that's experience that helps you. There's no that, doubt it's experience. I've worked with nine mayors, seven governors. I know how to get things done. I worked with Bob Lanier. I with just a range of governors and mayors, and I know their best practices and how to get things done. I have a chief of staff that's been with me 20 years. My district manager's been with me 17 years. People want to go to work for me. Retired city employees, good retired city employees, want to come back and work because they know I have a can-do attitude. I'm a no-nonsense person when it comes to getting the job done. And we'll make a difference. And we have issues with crime, infrastructure, flooding, okay. illegal dumping, the homeless issue. Everybody in downtown said, oh, the homeless in, in the administration. We've done such a good job. We can do better. Mm. Houstonians still don't want to have to engage with the homeless. They care for them, but we need to have them in a facility, a residential facility, help them change their lives and make Houston work. That's all I'm, the only reason I'm running. It was a tough decision. I love being in the Senate. Because right, you were there for a long time. I was 40 years in the Senate. I'm a chair in a Republican administration because I get things done. I work across the aisle. I love the Senate, but I love Houston more. I went to high school. I went to community college in U of H. I represent Houston. It is where you can be successful, but you need to be safe, and you also need to have an infrastructure that you can travel down the roads and not tear up your car to go to work. Well, we're going to talk more with uh, State Senator John Whitmire in just a moment.